the Nigerian Senate has accused the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, of bias in his report submitted to the Joint Committee on Police Affairs and National Intelligence by neglecting comment from Governor of Brand New State. This position was reached after the report of the Joint Committee on Police Affairs and National Intelligence on the resolution of the Senate on the Adult Committee on Security Visit to Benue State and directive of the Senate to the IGP to apprehend, prosecute the perpetrator presented by Senator Abu Ibrahim. Now, the full report of the IGP is accumulated at this report. Thus, following the outbreak of violence in some parts of the United States, we led a team to commence an on the spot assessment of the situation in the state with visits to flashpoints of the crisis, such as Logo and the Goma North Development areas of the United States and Tunga and Nasarawa State. The thereafter, a stakeholders meeting was convened on Thursday, the first day of January 2018, at Makadi, Binu State, where he met with the governor of Binu State, religious leaders, Leaders, opinion leaders, and civil society the Senate expressed worried that the report does not have input of the governor, saying that the governor was not spoken to or interviewed in the report of the IGP, saying the report is incomplete without comment from the state governor. I noted that in the statement made by the IG, he copiously mentioned the governor of um, Benue, you know, um, in most of the paragraphs. But I didn't see where the committee made an effort to speak with the governor. Unless I didn't see that. But because if, in the circumstance, they did not interview the governor, and his name had been mentioned in respect to certain statements and actions, it's only fair to him, and then uh, natural justice requires too that um, he should be invited by the committee and hear his own side of the story so that we have a balanced view of what transpired. That's just my only observation. A cross-section of senators accused the Inspector General of Police of being biased, which they say the report would be more productive if the governor, who was massively accused, be invited by the Inspector General of Police. I've gone through this summary. I've gone through this report. What I want to say is that This report would have been more rounded if the governor, who has been so massively accused by the IGP, was also invited to make input into this. The committee would have had the opportunity to interact with him. In his ruling, Senate President Bukala Saraki, while directing the committee to go back and complete the report, also concur that the report is incomplete without comment from the governor of Benue State. No doubt about it that it is incomplete because there are areas of the observation there on the about the reason comments of the governor. Governor of the Benue did, was not given an opportunity to comment. The only reason why I invited uh, Lao Senator Kume to speak. Well, I think that is the closest we could hear of the views of the governor of Benue, but even his own explanation does not explain that. Let Senator Abu Ibrahim go back and complete his uh, exercise and present a, a complete report, and at that time, I will accept contributions for everybody, and, and, and I think that's the way forward. Thank you. The committee was asked to report to Senate within one week when the chamber would deliberate on the next line of action. It will be recalled that the rest chamber had on January 16 and 17, 2018, debated the killing by S-men and other armed group across the country. From Abuja, Muiwa Bamdili reporting. Nigerian Chief of Army Staff 
Lieutenant General Tukobrutai has ordered immediate deployment of army troops to Benue, Taraba, Nasarawa, Kogi, Niger, and Kaduna states to contend insecurity in the sea state. The Nigerian Army Chief Training and Operation David Amadu made this announcement at a press conference in Abuja. Deployment came following ceaseless clashes between farmers and the S-men, which have resorted to several deaths. The troop will carry out special operations in affected states in conjunction with other sister security agencies from the Nigerian Police, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, among others. Peace Ambassador Hussein Kumasi has joined other Nigerians calling for youth participation in politics, especially in seeking for elected positions to be given a chance, even as the country prepares for its general election come 2019. Ambassador Hussein, who received an award of excellence at the one day second annual Arewa Youth Leadership Summit in Abuja, said youth during the First Republic abused the opportunity given to them to lead the country, but should be encouraged as many believe they have been neglected in the nation's politics. Uh, every day, everybody talk about youth, 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 youth. I wonder which kind, which of the youth they are talking about, which chance the youth want again. The first republic, uh, uh, the two youth were given chance to rule. I could remember Tafawa Balewa, Sardona were between 33, 34 years. Uh, Honorable Mbu, at the age of 24 years, he was a foreign affairs minister. Uh, opportunity were given to the youth. They abused it. The youths were the first people that overthrew the first democratic setup. And uh, so on and so forth. So now, what I'm trying to say, the youths wanted a second term. Not that they have been denied. They were given and they abused it. Now, we will give you people a second chance to rule. If you abuse it, you never smell it again. <laughs> Though the not too young to rule bill, which has passed second reading at the National Assembly, awaits its full endorsement by the executive arm of government. Ambassador Hussein believes the older politicians should be not be left out. No governor above the age of 40 will rule us again. Yes. yes. All these governors, Masai, uh, Ben Duje, and so, when they finish their second term, mark it on the rest. Don't allow anybody first to come time, in first again. Time, first time. Some people are saying first time. First time it will be one elder, one youth system this time around. If you are to present an old man, his uh, deputy must be between the age of 30, at, at most 35. Yeah. We don't agree with uh, a 70-year-old governor, 50-year-old deputy governor, no. If a governor is uh, above 50, his deputy should be 25 to 30. The summit has its theme, the role of today's northern youth in shaping Nigerians tomorrow, with a sub theme, youth inclusion in governance and politics, pathway for genuine national growth. In Abuja, LM Chukwemeka Report. The national chairman of the main opposition party in Nigeria, PDP, Prince Uche Secondos, says that Nigeria is going through what he never bargained for in all progressive Congress administration with its nuclear nepotism forms of government. The PDP both told the party caucus at the National Assembly that all and must be on theirs to save the country from President Muhammad Buhari led administration. Secundu described Buhari regime as a monumental disaster, a statement issued by the media advisor to the PDP chairman, Mr. E.K. Aboni in Abuja, said Secundu, who led other members of the National Working Committee of the party to the National Assembly, said they came to rob mine on how to save the country. Secundu said Nigeria has seen 
what they never bargained for in the last 32 months of APC administration and their people are being killed on daily basis. Nuclear nepotism is in vogue. PDP chairman charged its National Assembly member to brace for the challenge ahead since they were the leaders of the party at the grassroots. Lovely place, right? Yes. What's wrong? You don't look happy. Take a look around. Why can't my hotel be like this? I knew something was wrong, but I've got solution. Solution? What? Nanet. Nanet? Nanet offers you design solutions, building plans and construction, furnishing and equipping, financing, management, audit services, and many more services for a better hospitality business. Nanet, service with a smile. The Nigerian Senate has shown concern on the approach of the EFCC in its investigation of corruption cases. This, as its Committee on Anti-Corruption and Financial Crime begins an inquest into the arrest of the chairman of Innocent Motto, Innocent Chukuma. The committee chaired by Senator Chukuka Utazi is investigating the abuse of power by the anti graft agency as it relates to its involvement in a purely commercial transaction involving Innocent Boss and GT Bank. Last year, on 19 December 2017, the Anambra Bond Industrialist was allegedly Mandu and his wife assaulted before being whisked away by the armed EFCC operative. The widely reported incident of his arrest has since sparked a series of other events, including lawsuits at the Senate investigative hearing, the lawyer of Innocent Group of Moto, Professor Makati Madinaga, recounted the action of the operatives of the EFCC at the point of arrest of his client. The EFCC men operatives that came to arrest me slapped my wife because she asked them of their warrant of arrest. They also beat up want you to say, who is living with me is stupid. Why is using tear gas on him for failing to tell them where I was and he almost passed out? PSCC of British maltreated me as well, used tear gas on me, flew me to Lagos in pair of shorts and a t-shirt, snapped me with camera and sent the pictures to GT Bank and this principal staff. They also injured some of my staff while they were shooting the live bullets and tear gas. The account of the illegal representative of the car manufacturing company was then followed by Senator Dino Milai inquiry on whether personnel of the anti graft agency had warrant authorizing the said arrest. And I'm sure you are conversant with that. Okay? If you are not competent to represent the EFCC, we will ask you to go. You are here because you are competent to represent the EFCC. Okay? So my question is very, very simple. Objective question. Did you have a warrant of arrest when you went to Enugu to arrest him. I act as I said. You, are not, you, you, will, you will have to answer this question or I'll take the leave of my colleagues to work you out. This is the Senate. This is not a jump question. Yes, sir. I, I will, if you permit me, I will ask for permission to verify that. Uh, I cannot categorically say because it's arising from this, which I didn't anticipate. Okay. I looked at, I would just... Uh, uh, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Yes, yes. Senate committee said the action of the EFCC is bad example of law enforcement, noting negative effect it may also have on investment. When they now 
to violate his right. You know, some of men in his house. That was what we heard in the Senate. And that's how this matter came to the Senate. And of course, we are looking at, look at me from that point. That was what my colleague said. This is human rights aspect of it, so I want to say. And that is what we really, why is what we find missing in your own act? Having to effect arrest before investigation. Investigation ought to be completed before arrest. That's what happens on that claims. Yes. So let us not keep making this same mistake. Thank you. Sir, 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 please, if I can... The committee subsequently urged the EFCC, GT Bank, and Industry Motto to present other vital documents that will aid its investigation. In foreign direct investments, we are conversing. People will look at how you handle the, even the one that is inside of you here, inside Nigeria here. How do you handle such businessman or a business entity? And you want a foreigner to come down here. It, it will be a very, very difficult thing. So it is on this issue that the National Assembly came all out and said they have to protect the integrity of businessmen in this country. Protect and ensure that uh, we don't give wrong signal. Because it was a wash in the social media. If the National Assembly didn't come rise to occasion, they will say, okay, we are complicit. Nothing happens. We don't we just look the other way. At least they did help what happened and they help what the National Assembly is doing. To ensure that we restore confidence in uh, 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 restore confidence in the international community or even businessmen doing business in Nigeria. The investigative public hearing is therefore scheduled to resume in a week's time. The Nigerian Communications Commission said the number of active mobile phone lines in the country rose to 144 million in December 2017. This showed an increase of 2,731,273 lines from 142 million recorded in November 2017. In its monthly subscribers operator data posted on its website, the commission said the active line moved to 144,631,678 in December compared to 141,900,405 in November 2017. The Code Division Multiple Access CDMA still had 217,566 users in December, same as November. According to NCC, the number of voice over internet protocol, VOIP, was 70,926 in December, while in November it was 61,488, an increase of 5,977. Teledensity for December 2017 was 103,061 against 101,066 in November, recording an increase of 195. NCC said the number of connected mobile lines in December decreased to 226,927,494 in December compared to 237,010,282 in November 2017, an increase of 82,785. The Code Division Multiple Access CDMA for connected lines for December was 3,586,095, same with November 2017. The report also said voice over internet protocol, VOIP for connected lines in December was 472,844, while in November it was 239,091, showing an increase of 233,753. Former President Olusha Gunova Sunjo says he has no candidate for any political office come 2019. He said this in Abayokuta during a course visit by a youth group from Delta State. Obasanjo who said he had taken decision in 2015 not to participate any longer in partisan politics, added that he would rather remain a statement having a passion for a greater Nigeria. 
he further explained that his recent open letter to President Muhammadu Buhari was not in any way to disrespect him or his office. Obasanjo said in the letter he was only articulating his view about the situation in the country and offering his candid advice. He explained that his statement was thoroughly thought out, adding that as a former president, he could not hold the office of the president in contempt. Obasanjo, however, retreated that the coalition for Nigerian movement will remain a social political movement, insisting that he will cease to be a member of the coalition the moment it transforms into political party or become partisan. <laughs>